good morning students today we are going to discuss about a very important topic hemostasis as the name suggests hem hem means blood stasis means stagnant so the blood has to remain stagnant before going to the topic i want you to understand the difference between homeostasis and hemostasis so some students usually get confused so before going into hemostasis just remember homeostasis is maintenance of internal environment homeo that is different hemo that is different so don't forget, don't confuse so today we will discuss about hemostasis so the main steps five steps involved in hemostasis are vasoconstriction platelet plug vasoconstriction platelet plug formation clot formation clot retraction and fibrinolysis so these are the five steps involved in hemostasis especially up to the three steps some books will give these three steps that is up to the formation of clot is hemostasis if they ask what is clot formation called formation of clot is called as coagulation or clotting where fibrin thread is formed so, coagulation of blood is a part of hemostasis so up to this coagulation is enough but you can even add after formation of clot what happens it has to be retracted so clot retraction and then the fibrin thread which is formed as done its function and fibrinolysis will take place so i will be concentrating on one by one so now concentrate yeah this is the structure of a blood vessel and you can see rbc's wbc's platelets all are flowing now imagine so there is a cut or rupture what happens first step is there is endothelial rupture because of that the underlying collagen very very important is exposed so these two steps are important so when the blood vessel is not cut there is no endothelial rupture and the collagen is not going to be exposed why means these two these two steps are important for the next things so now what happens this endothelial rupture will release endothelin because it is coming from the ruptured endothelium and it will not come from the normal endothelium one of the function is vaso constriction for the vessels at the level of the rupture will constrict so that when the vessels constrict the blood flow can be reduced so one type of reducing the blood loss and apart from that this vaso constriction can be neurogenic noted down another one is myogenic myo means muscle yeah there is smooth muscle present within the blood vessel wall and the smooth muscle also will go for contraction which causes the blood vessels to constrict so the first step vaso constriction is endothelial neurogenic myogenic smooth muscle so that is the first step at the site of injury the vessel tries to constrict to prevent the blood loss now coming to other next step we are going to the platelet plug formation so we are going to see how the platelet plug is formed now what happens yeah they are the endothelium is normal the blood vessel is normal now no cut has occurred but here yeah, the blood vessel has ruptured which releases one milligram factor this is very very important step i will tell you why this is important step now we'll imagine yeah let this be one i will draw it here one milligram factor now the function of the one milligram factor is to bring the platelets i will take one platelet all these are platelets for understanding i will draw one platelet bit these are the receptors so what i have drawn is platelets with receptors and these receptors are contain glycoprotein 1b gp 1b glycoprotein 1b the role of glycoprotein 1b is this will be attracted to one milligram factor so one milligram factor so the glycoprotein 1b receptors which are present in the platelets will come to bind with one milligram factor but when the one milligram factor is released only when the endothelium is ruptured or collagen is exposed when endothelium is ruptured only when there is a cut so this step the platelet is having receptor glycoprotein 1b coming to one milligram factor only if there is a cut 
if no cut this will not occur very very important step i am telling the importance of one libran factor and glycoprotein one okay now the one libran factor and the glycoprotein one b so what this does is this will attract the platelets yeah from here the platelets will come here because one libran factor attracts glycoprotein one b Again, I will draw here one big platelet coming here. This is glycoprotein 1b. This is one milligram factor. Again, one platelet coming here. Yeah, this is glycoprotein 1b. This is one milligram factor already there. So the function of one milligram factor is bringing the platelets, which is moving in the blood vessel, to the site of damaged area. And this first step is called adhesion. The platelets gets because of this one milligram factor the platelets come to the place where the endothelium is ruptured why the platelets come there because one milligram factor has the property of attracting the platelets one milligram factor is coming from only ruptured endothelium what is the communication between one milligram factor and the platelets it is glycoprotein one b if you want you can note another thing also yeah this one this is called glycoprotein 2 b 9 a so what if this glycoprotein does is the platelets which are going in the same direction horizontal direction they get combined so these receptors has bonding with these receptors. So glycoprotein 1B is for vertical down, bringing the platelets down to the exposed area where one milligram factor is released. Glycoprotein 2B9A is for attracting the platelets horizontally. Overall, the function of these glycoproteins are trying to bring the platelets to this place. So now just concentrate the platelets or other end, other elements coming to join. Because of one milligram factor, that is the first step. Once the platelet joins, what it does? It gets activated. So the platelets, which is circulating here, is just as such which is going. But once the platelets gets othered to the one milligram factor, it gets activated. So it is going to do something. It gets activated, and because of that, it starts releasing. Very very important release. So what these platelets will release is thromboxin A2, ATP, thromboxin A2, ADP and serotonin. I'll repeat, the activated platelets will release thromboxin A2, ADP, serotonin. And now just concentrate, this is release. So platelets other to one milligram factor, once they get other, they get activated. The activated platelets will start releasing three chemicals mainly, thromboxin A2, ADP, serotonin. Remember, Thromboxin A2 and serotonin also causes vasoconstriction. Already we saw the first step vasoconstriction because of endothelium, neural mechanism and smooth muscle contraction which is myogenic mechanism. Even in the second step where the platelet plug is going to be formed, thromboxin A2 serotonin which is released by the activated platelets also helps in vasoconstriction. That also you can note it down. Now what this does is this thromboxin A2, all these three will stimulate the aggregation of platelets. I, I will write it here. This thromboxin A2 or we can the activated platelets will release all these things and what this does is apart from mass reconstruction, see here the diagram is ADP thromboxin and serotonin goes to the other platelets and bring all the other platelets. So what happens? See here the aroma. This platelet comes here, this platelet comes here because of the release of these chemicals. So the other platelets which are circulating in the blood comes to the site of injury. And they get aggregated like this, you can see here. Yeah, they get aggregated. Why all the platelets are coming there aggregated? So the aggregation of platelets is because of the release of ADP thromboxin A2 serotonin. From where they are released, they are released from the activated platelets. Why the platelets are activated? Because of the adhesion of platelets, which is done by one ligand factor. So one ligand factor is very, very important. Yeah, this is called Temporary, you can see the aggregation of platelets at the site of injury. This is called temporary platelet plug formation, which is the second step in hemostasis. So the first step is vasoconstriction. The second step is temporary platelet plug formation, which is caused by aggregation of platelets. Now, why it is temporary? So the next question says, because this platelet plug is not permanent, it is loose. Easily it can be dislodged. So it is not tight. Oh, for example, you can understand flowers. Which are, tied, which are not tied by the neck. Imagine the flowers which are all loose. So each flower is a place but it is kept together but not tied. 
so when little bit air comes it will be flown away so this is loose so like how i use thread to tie the flowers so if i tie with a thread the flowers make it a garland the garland will not be easily blown away like the individual flowers so this thread that plug around individual flowers group together but not tied so i need something to tie it to make it to permanent plug which i call as plot that is the third step so the second step is temporary petal plug which is loose it is not tight it can be easily gone away again there is a possibility of bleeding coming but to prevent the complete stop or to stop the bleeding completely i need a clot to be formed so that i need a thread to tighten i want to tighten this is loose i want to tighten it and once i tighten it that will be converted to a clot and the clot is called as permanent platelet plug this is i am using a thread i want to tighten it and this thread is called fibrin thread so third step so making a fibrin thread around the platelet plug we get a clot so now the third step is formation of fibrin thread which you call as clot so i will tell the definition clotting or coagulation note it down the coagulation of blood is nothing but conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin or conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin is called coagulation so once fibrin is formed i told the reason what fibrin does it tightens formation of fibrin it has to come from fibrinogen we know the function of fibrin which is forming a mesh mesh you remember mesh it is very easy so it is forming a mesh around the platelets but how from where the fibrin is formed all this fibrinogen is clotting factors i am not going to tell about the clotting factors today there are totally 13 clotting factors so fibrin is coming from fibrinogen and for fibrinogen to be converted to fibrin i wrote a thrombin what is the function of thrombin thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin what is the function of fibrin it is a thread like thing which is covering the loose platelets how loose platelets are formed loose platelets are all aggregated together because of platelet plug formation how it is formed because of release of three chemicals adp thromboxin a2 serotonin from where it is released from the platelets which platelets not the one which is circulating the one which is attached with von willebrand factor that's the role of von willebrand factor the platelets which are attached to the von willebrand factor through glycoproteins 1b are the one which activated and release these chemicals and these chemicals aggregate more and more platelets like this platelet plug is formed this we understood fibrinogen is converted to fibrin by thrombin from that thrombin is formed you try to answer yourself yeah from prothrombin prothrombin is factor number 2 and for conversion of prothrombin to thrombin i need pta which is activator prothrombin activator thrombin is the one which converts fibrinogen to fibrin with the help of calcium only down wherever i mark calcium that is a very important mcq especially need question they will ask the role of calcium involvement for conversion of prothrombin to thrombin i require prothrombin activator which is tan a so now i am going to discuss about how this tan a is formed how prothrombin activator is formed there are two pathways so both are again repeat worth repeating prothrombin activator the name suggests it activates the prothrombin to thrombin what is the role of thrombin it converts fibrinogen soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin what is the role of fibrin it is the one which ties the loose platelet plug so so far it is clear we are now in the third step that is how the fibrin thread is formed so i have to explain about factor 10a so now for the formation of factor 10a which is prothrombin activator two steps are there intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway how the name came is this pathway maybe they found when the blood was taken outside so the blood was taken outside of the body but still the clot occurred maybe because of a factor called a tissue factor so they kept the name extrinsic pathway so tissue factor which is also called as tissue thromboplastin so this is actually factor 3 so what this does is this helps in formation of 7a so note it down 7 so there is no number you have to write you should not write a number you should write only a normal number For understanding, I have written in number, or better, I will write in no Roman number itself. Three, seven, and this is ten. So remember, three plus seven is equal to ten. So whenever you are going to explain about extrinsic, remember three plus seven is ten. Three is nothing but thromboplastin. So tissue thromboplastin. So 
when there is injury to the blood vessel, the tissue factor is exposed, the tissue thromboplastin is released, and what is factor 3 tissue thromboplastin does? It converts factor 7 to factor 7a, and this factor 7a is the one which helps in conversion of 10 to 10a. And remember, this product is common for both intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway. Factor 10a is nothing but prothrombin activator and factor 10a can be formed from intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway. I now explain extrinsic pathway. 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. So 3 is tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin which converts 7 to 7a. And again here calcium is needed, not it down. Phospholipids is also needed. So conversion of factor 7 to 7a requires calcium, phospholipids as well as factor 3, tissue thromboplastin. And factor 7a converts 10 to 10a, I require calcium phospholipids. Intrinsic pathway starts from 12. We will start with factor 12. Is activated to factor 12a. This will help in 11 to activate to 11a. And again this 11a is activating 9 to 9a. And this 9a direct yeah. Again I repeat. Factor 12 is activated to factor 12a. And the 12 helps in activating 11 to 11a. That 11a helps in activating 9 to this is a 9a. And this 9a with the help of 8a calcium phospholipids converts factor 10 to 10a. So 8a comes here. So 9a helps in conversion of 10 to 10a with the help of 8a. This 10a is nothing but prothrombin activator. So prothrombin activator is formed from two pathways. Intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway is 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 for membrane. So just concentrate. Now fact, step 3 is over. That is fibrin thread has formed which tightens. So now what happens? It becomes permanent platelet plug. So step 2 was temporary platelet plug which is very loose. This after the fibrin thread formed it becomes permanent platelet plug or that is clot. Clot is nothing but fibrin thread. Remember, up to the clot formation, we call it as clotting time. Or all the three steps together. The time taken for clot, fibrin thread to form is called clotting time. The time taken to form the second step, that is platelet plug, is called bleeding time. So there is difference between bleeding time and clotting time. If you ask which will be more, obviously clotting time will be more. And remember, clotting time involves clotting factors. All the clotting factors, 13 clotting factors are there. Bleeding time involves platelets. So bleeding time will be increased in condition of deficiency of platelets. Clotting time will be involved increased in deficiency of clotting factors. So don't confuse bleeding time and clotting time. Now coming to the fourth step, clot retraction. So now the clot has formed. The, period, the place is sealed, rather the cut occurred, the place is sealed. But this clot remains as such it is there. So what happens? The flow may be affected. So this will still try to retract the sense will be tried to close because this can't be as such there. So that step is called clot retraction. Because of that, it will try to release platelet derived growth factor, vascular epidermal growth factor. In fact, vascular genesis possibility is also there at the site of rupture. The fourth step is clot retraction or tightening of the clot. Now once when it is permanently sealed, the fifth step is fibrinolysis. As the name suggests, we know fibrin thread is already formed, but that has to be lysed. So this fibrinolysis is done by plasmin. 